Welcome back, traders and investors. Uh, we have a special guest on today, Tim McDermott, uh, Chief Compliance Officer at the Natives Exchange. Tim, how are you doing today? Good. How are you, Joe? We're doing okay. We're doing all right. Great. Uh, just quickly, just give us a little bit of your, your education and uh, your background in the markets, how you got to this point. Sure. I am uh, an attorney uh, with an um, accounting undergraduate degree and a legal degree. I uh, went into private practice for about 14 years working in uh, financial markets law and after that went to a large exchange in Chicago where I was responsible for overseeing their market activity and enforcing rules for their fair and, and transparent open markets. And for the last six years, I've been the general counsel and chief regulatory officer at the Nadex Exchange. Okay, could you um, explain uh, binary options in the Nadex Exchange uh, uh, for our listeners? Sure. So binary options are uh, really a straightforward, limited risk financial contract, which is based on a simple yes or no proposition. And at a, that proposition is at expiration. Um, there are one of two possible outcomes for the trader holding the position, all or nothing. Um, and so those contracts trade um, based on an underlying. They have a fair amount of volatility uh, as um, the markets are proceeding. And the price at which the contract is being traded at any given time suggests the probability that that contract will close in the money. So if it's trading at a price of 40, that suggests that the market thinks there's a 40% probability that the contract will end in the money. If it's trading at a price of 75, there's a 75% probability. Okay. And um, is there a lot of experience needed to trade these, or is it something that people can, you know, get involved in just kind of, you know, it's, you know, as a novice, or is it, you know, it's really something that you need a good background in? Well, Joe, that's sort of the, the beauty of these types of contracts is they're very well suited for inexperienced traders as well as experienced traders. And the reason I say that is because for inexperienced traders, these contracts are limited risk contracts. They're fully collateralized, um, or uh, by that I mean uh, upfront, the traders to the participants to any particular trade uh, uh, have placed with the exchange an amount sufficient to cover any possible loss they might have on the position. So they go into the, into the trade knowing that they've put up as much as they're going to risk on the contract, and they're never going to get a margin call for additional money, uh, and they're certainly never going to get uh, a physical delivery of some you know, carload of cattle or something else that they don't want. So uh, it, that limited risk feature is really good for the new traders, and because these contracts are binary contracts and um, – they tend to have, particularly for contracts with an expiration value um, that's that's close to the close to the market, um, that's trading around 50, a price of 50. They can have a lot of volatility, mm -hmm. and that's something that experienced traders um, look for, and uh, I think appreciate uh, having. Um, the opportunity to take advantage of that. Okay, so is this just uh, for U.S. residents, or can offshore brokers trade with U.S. residents on this? So currently, we accept as uh, direct members of the exchange um, only U.S. residents, and um, uh, we also are um, uh, able to take on uh, FCM members, brokerage firms, and the brokerage firms can accept customers. Um, from wherever their customer base comes from. But for the direct members, we only accept uh, U.S. residents at the current time. Okay, and who governs the exchange? Well, we are regulated by the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, and we are also a self-regulatory organization. So we have a responsibility ourselves independent, um, independently to make sure that our markets are um, Fair and transparent and open and comply with the regulations and that our uh, and particularly that our um, market participants are complying with all of the rules and regulations that apply to our markets. And are there day trading restrictions as far as the amount of trades that can be done per day, like you have in the the uh, you know the equities markets, or is it uh, governed differently? We we don't really have any day trading restrictions of that sort. 
what we do have is, as I mentioned previously, fully collateralized trading. What that means is you're not allowed to trade any more um, than the money that you have in your account at any particular time. So um, you, you can't overextend yourself beyond the funds that you've already deposited with the exchange. Similarly, we do have position limits. So if your position gets too large, for example, in our US 500 contract, um, you can only put on uh, 2,500 binary options at any particular time. So that, that could be a restriction, but it's we, it, we don't have the type of day trading restrictions that you're referring to. Okay, you guys must have had one heck of a battle with the exchanges, huh, when you were trying to, to get this uh, venture up and going? Um, it, not really, because we, and, and, and it, it sort of makes sense, because we don't really compete with the existing exchanges, uh, the more traditional exchanges that, that you see out there. To tell you the truth, we, we really see ourselves as being a nice complement to, and in some cases even sort of an introduction to um, those type, those bigger exchange, those bigger exchanges that trade more traditional futures contracts. So somebody can come to Nadex, they can trade hundred dollar binary options with limited risk, learn how to watch the markets, learn how to trade in and out of a position, learn um, how different underlying markets work, um, really learn the the business of trading. And then once they've done that, they can add um, trading the underlying futures or the underlying FX market or other markets um, that complement the markets that, that we offer um, with that training and education. So we, we really don't see ourselves as competitors with those other exchanges, and we, we see a sort of a symbiotic relationship there. Okay, I got a few questions for Dan if you want to put him on. Sure, I'll pass, pass you over. Hello, Joe. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Uh, it's going great. How are you doing today? We're doing okay. We're doing okay. Just trying to learn about these binary options here. And uh, uh, Tim started to go into it a little bit, but uh, could you just go a little more you know, uh, detail about the benefits of trading binary options? And uh, I looked on your site. You guys talk about bull spreads. I'm sure you have bear spreads as well. Yeah, I, I can cover both of those things. Sure. Uh, on, on, on the binary options, one of the things, and, and Tim mentioned it, is the limited risk. Um, I, I've been in the markets uh, for about 17 years. I've traded everything from equities to futures to Forex. And kind of my wow moment was when I looked at this limited risk. One of the big struggles that traders have, and you hear it all the time, is manage your risk, manage your risk. But they don't really know what that risk is, particularly in leveraged markets. With a binary option, and even with a, with a spread contract, I know what that full risk is up front. So it takes away a lot of, uh, I guess, that psychological aspect that we see where people uh, that are using stops, you know, particularly the newer traders, they start seeing the market move against them and they start pulling their stops away. This gives you basically time to be right, which is one of the big, um, big components uh, of that aspect. Additionally, they're, they're simple contracts and they really fit all level of traders. And I don't want to say simple as far as, uh, you know, oh, they're only good for beginners. Because what, what they are is they're easy to understand, price is the probability, yet there are expansive, um, expansive strategies that you can use really for all market conditions. On, on the bull spreads, um, and we do have the bull spread contract, which is a little bit different than the binary. Rather than a 0 or 100 expiration value, it settles to the underlying market. And so it's more of a variable type of payout contract, uh, but again, with a floor and ceiling and limited risk. And while they're called bull spreads, you can also be long or short the market. Um, it just depends on whether you're buying or selling that contract. Okay, and uh, you mentioned there uh, uh, built-in floor and ceiling levels. You just want to highlight that? Sure thing. So, for instance, uh, if I was looking at an oil contract, we may have oil uh, trading at $95. I might have a range of $95 to $100, $95 being the floor. So if I'm long at, say, 95.50, uh, that's 50 ticks, $50 risk. That's what I'd put up to secure that contract with a maximum reward of up to 100. If, I'm, if the market's trading near 100, then I have that same floor and ceiling of 95 and 100. I could sell near the 100 level and limit my risk that way without having to worry about putting a stop in and being stopped out. I basically have the protection of an option. <clears throat> okay, and uh, can you just like just walk us through like a quick example here of uh, like one of your shorter term options here, you know, off the open, something that's available or 
just a quick example here. Let's say, uh, do you on the S and P five hundred futures? Do you have anything based on that? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, we call it the U.S. five hundred. And so one of the things, you know, um, particularly around fundamental news announcements, we always talk about risk and, and limited risk. Very difficult to do in the futures markets, particularly depending on the size of the account. If you're trading, let's say, in front of a non-farm payroll or a Fed announcement, it can be a very risky place to be in, in a leveraged market. By using these contracts, you can really lock in your risk. You don't have to use a stop because you have the protection of an option. And so if the market does take a swing against you <clears throat> and stays there, A, you knew up front what your full risk was, and you can't lose more than that. But B, it gives you time and opportunity. We often see whipsaws around these reports. And so the protection of these contracts allows you to basically live through those whipsaws and, and have time for the market to move in your favor if it decides to. Okay, so options are good a lot of times when you know the markets are moving and they're volatile and then there's also ways that you know you can take advantage of, of options in a quiet market by selling premium are the same there's the same opportunities in the binary markets in in flat or you know um you know quiet markets absolutely uh and, and that's one of the keys particularly on the binary option they're always going to be moving um because of the time value built into them they're always going to be moving whether the market is or not there are also additional strategies. If you think the market's going to stay range-bound, um, you can work options because we list multiple strikes. You can work options around the market, basically saying that your opinion is it's going to stay within this range. And so it gives you an opportunity in other times where you might not see any real trading opportunities to get any type of movement, a very low volatile situation, where you still have a trade that you can place in a strategy that you can use with limited risk, but that can capture an opportunity in those markets. Okay, and what are the different time expirations do you guys offer? Uh, we offer daily, intraday, and weekly contracts. So depending on what the time horizon is, uh, they're very complementary to the underlying markets. Um, so for instance, if you're very short-term, you may look towards the intradays, or if you're trying to capture something around uh, a known event, such as a report, you might look for the shorter duration one. If you're looking for something more fundamental, maybe over the next two or three days, you might look toward the weekly contract. And which ones are the most heavily traded? Uh, right now, the intraday and daily uh, typically see the most activity, which really makes sense because there, there are more intraday and daily contracts than what there are weekly. Uh, but we see a lot of, uh, a lot of traders uh, you know, gravitating towards those daily and intraday, trying to capture the short-term movements of the market. And you get, uh, you know, arbitrage opportunities. Uh, you know, I know they're not exactly similar contracts, but do you, do you find people uh, doing arb between similar products on the other exchanges? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't consider it so much arbitrage. I would actually consider it more of, of a complement. So if they're trading, let's say they're trading the ES on the futures side or they're trading currencies like the euro, U.S. dollar, they actually may be using these contracts not as arbitrage, but actually as a complementary contract to help mitigate or offset some of that overall position risk. And that's really what we see um, uh, and from the traders you know, that we see is that they're using them as complementary to mitigate that risk. Is there cross-margining uh, available through the FCMs or not? Uh, there is not cross-margining uh, between, between the exchanges. Um, these are fully collateralized contracts, which... Um, again, is not really margin. Um, the Correct. benefit of that is there are no margin calls. I never have to worry about you know calling my wife and telling her I was on vacation if I'm a trader. You know that our vacation is canceled if I'm a trader because I thought oil was going to 105 and now it's sitting at 85. So there's there's really not a margin situation. So no cross margining between exchanges. And how are fees calculated? Uh, fees are pretty simple. They're basically 90 cents a side. Um, capped at 10 contracts per order. You can trade more than that. So, for example, if I trade one contract, it's 90 cents. If I trade 10, it's $9. If I trade 100, it's still $9. And then there are various fees for expiration. I definitely encourage traders to understand the fees and check out our website for a full explanation of those fees. Okay. And, uh, you know, any final tips for investors interested in trading binary options? Well, with any, with any vehicle and, and binary options in particular, always know the where and the when and the how. Basically, where am I trading? Is it in a regulated, transparent environment? Those are things you want to understand. You also need to understand the contracts. How, how do they work? How, does, how do they relate to the underlying market? And I think with Nadex and the transparency it offers, um, it, it gives that comfort level 
as well as safety of funds and a whole other slew of benefits. Now, one thing I will say, though, is also I'd encourage them to take a look at a demo account. Um, get in and understand, see how the contracts trade, learn the platform, and we do offer a demo account, and it's free to open an account with Nadex. Okay, uh, we've had uh, Tim McDermott and Dan Cook on of the Nadex Exchange uh, explaining uh, binary options to us. Uh, gentlemen, I thank you for your time today, and uh, we'll definitely have to take a look at your site. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Okay.